Hello and welcome back to my chess channel. Uh, starting with this video, I'll be covering the entirety of the 1935 World Chess Championship between uh, Alexander Aliakin and Max Erva. Um, uh, I won't cover most of the draws. I'll cover a couple of the interesting games that ended up draws, but all the, all the videos I'll be doing are decisive games. Um, uh, this is... Uh, one of those world chess championships that's kind of put not much attention's paid to it, kind of neglected. Just uh, sometimes er Max Erva is even regarded as a lesser, uh, uh, you know, world uh, world champion uh, compared to to other figures in history. So maybe uh, or hopefully watching my my videos and looking at these games more closely will help you appreciate uh, just how strong of a player he was. Um, uh, another thing about pronunciation, I mean, I just out of, you know, habit, uh, often refer to Alec, Alekine, uh, instead of Aliek, and it's, it's, uh, I think, I think these two, two players are among the most notorious about mispronunciation of their names. Uh, it's definitely not Max U or Max Ue, uh, it's, the correct way to pronounce it is Max Erva, he's Dutch. Um... And uh, um, uh, Aliakin, I believe, is the correct way to pronounce. Uh, it, it, not Alekine, but Aliakin's name. Uh, so I will be referring to them in, with those pronunciations. Just wanted to make a note about that. Uh, so here in the first video, I'm just going to go through the first game. Uh, so let's just jump straight into it. Uh, I may, may get some more historical side notes as we go along later on, but... I'm just going to focus on the game here. So this first game, uh, Aliakin has the white pieces and starts with d4. We have d5, c4, the queen's gambit, c6, Erva plays the slob, knight f f3, knight f6, and knight c3. Um, here, other lines were in fashion at the time for white against the slob, such as the Moran, but Alekin, sorry, Aliakin, uh, here plays a line that his rival Capablanca played uh, for a win in his own match with Erva back in 1931 um, with knight c3, d takes c4, and a4. Um, playing e3 here, this line, e3, b5, a4, and b4 uh, is a line uh, known at the time to equalize for black. Uh, so that's why e3 isn't played. Um, so d takes c4, a4, bishop f5, and knight to e5 here. Uh, not wanting to close the diagonal for the dark square bishop here uh, with e3. So Aliakin later, though, um, I mean, that, that's a, it's, this is a more aggressive move. Uh, committing to 90, 95 here. Uh, but Aliakin later, after their rematch in, uh, in the 1937 World Chess Championship match, uh, deems this aggressive move less promising than just pushing E3 here, uh, which is the most popular line today uh, by top players. Um, uh, so uh, I thought I figured it was important to note that, that he... he, he he changes his mind later on about this line. But here he goes for this aggressive, more aggressive play with knight to e5. Um, and knight, Erva responds with knight b to d7. Aliakin uh, later says that uh, this is a, a, a superior move here for black playing e6. And we actually get the same position in their rematch in 1937 in the 11th game where we get... Uh, bishop g5, bishop e4, f3, and h6. Um, where at least I, I think black's slightly better here in this line than uh, 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 after this knight. b to d7 move. So there's something to what Aliak is saying here. So knight takes c4, queen c7. Um, here black wants to push. The idea is black wants to push e5 and he just wants to push e5 and develop his bishop um that's all uh so 
g3, e5, d takes e5, knight takes e5, bishop f4, knight f to d7, bishop g2 here. I'm just being headering the bishop. And here, Irva plays bishop e6. And um, the first mistake, and one that creates notable problems for black, this move has even been referred to as the, uh, um, the root cause of black's difficulties in this game. Um, and, uh, well, it's, it's very clear, at least from this point, uh, White s slowly improves his position with each sequence of moves throughout the rest of this game. Um, let's look at a couple of alternatives here for what Black could have played. Um, so F6 is one idea. Uh, uh, my, my initial inclination here was to play G5. Let's look at that first. Uh, maybe this is the best option. We're, you know, the usual continuation here... I mean, there's a couple, there's a few things that could, that could happen. First, the wrong thing to do is uh, 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 to grab this, obviously. You can't just grab the pawn with the bishop because then uh, after knight takes uh, c4, uh, targeting uh, b, b2, uh, queen d4, and then knight c to e5, um, uh, black just, just wins material. So you can't, you can't capture the pawn. Um... If um, knight takes e5, if you just grab the knight, then knight takes e5, knight d4, or sorry, queen d4, f6, kingside castle, or sorry, queenside castle, bishop to e7, knight e3, bishop to e6, and white just has a great position here. Uh, uh, um, his pieces are very active. Um... I mean, this this king's a, in a little bit of an awkward uh, uh, position, but um, there's no clear way for black to to attack, and black's still not castled, and these th th are looking very scary. Um, um, this is this all looks very scary. I mean, white has a great position here. I would definitely want to have the white pieces in this position. Um, so you don't want to capture, I think, um, on e5. Uh, maybe s s the best option here for white is to play uh, knight e5. And then after g takes f f4, um, knight takes f5, king side, queen side castle. Um, um, it's white's still doing better, I think, but um, yeah, it's probably uh, black's best response here. But I like that G5. That's why I like the G5 move. I think that it gives uh, um, better option or better uh, situation for Black than what we get in the game. Or, or the other option is this, though, but just playing F6, uh, which maybe uh, arguably is better than than G5, um, because after uh, the best move for White here is the castle, uh, and after Bishop E6. Uh, knight takes e5, uh, f takes e5. Um, I mean, you can argue that this this is uh, good for for black, but um, uh, th this 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 line was played by Capablanca a few years earlier to this game, uh, and I'm sure both players are familiar with with this line and and um, uh, maybe maybe just didn't want to enter into this. Um, so what Irva plays though is bishop to e6. Um, so uh, Aliakin, uh captures on e5, knight captures on e5, castles, and bishop to e7. Maybe a slight improvement here is uh, queen a5, but uh, Irva plays bishop e7, queen c2. Uh, threatening here, I mean, this is a really strong move, uh, threatening either knight d5, um, because there's, there's this, uh, the pawn can't capture, because you just hang the queen, uh, so threatening either knight d5 or knight b5 and, uh, bringing the knight over to, uh, d4, um, both ideas look really good, um, 
and it, it's it may be difficult for black to hang on to the bishop pair much longer um, uh, de depending on what happens um, so rook d8 and interesting note about this Irv actually uh, uh, took 40 minutes thinking about the uh, this move uh, they had two and a half hours, I guess, for the first 40 moves in the game. But Irvin spent 40 minutes on move 14 here to play Rook D8. So a lot of deep thought going into this position. Um, I mean, I think Irvin wants to play Queen A, Queen A5, at least at some point. Though I think, he again, he's worried about playing this now. Uh, because of, I mean, this move looks scary. Um, uh, playing um, knight b5 uh, with the idea of taking on, uh, obviously the queen can't take the, the knight, uh, and white threatens to take on e5, and uh, if it, I mean, if the knight's moved, um, I mean, you have to play something like f6, I guess, and it's just a weakening move. Uh, because the idea is that um, uh, white's threatening to uh, play knight c7 check and win material. Uh, and if that bishop is, is covering, this, the bishop needs to cover that square. So you have to play something in order to not uh, uh, allow that to happen here, like f6. And that's just a weakening move. Um, so it's kind of uncomfortable for black... Uh, to hang on to a stable position uh, if queen a5 is played immediately. So I think that's why Irva er, spent so long in this position um, because I think he wanted to play a move like that and um, spent a long time calculating different variations um, about where he's going to bring his queen um, and... and uh, the best sequence for that. So he starts with rook d d8. We have rook f to d1, castles, and knight b5. Very strong. Again, he can't capture the knight because the, the they would leave the queen hanging. Um, uh, and here, um, this move isn't isn't so great. Maybe uh, Irv captures on d1. Again, he still wants to play queen a5. I think. Uh, you know, this exchange kind of concedes the d-file. Let's look at a couple of things here. Again, if, if queen a5, uh, then after rook takes d8, rook takes d8, knight takes e5, c takes b5, uh, bishop takes b7, and rook d2. After queen c1, white's just up a pawn uh, and, and clearly better. So, so just playing, again, uh, queen a5 immediately here doesn't, do, doesn't really help. Uh, if queen b8, you know, maybe it's a bit better, um, for black, but I, after knight d4, bishop c8, yeah, I mean, I think that, that at least here, you know, white doesn't have any obvious advantage, um, in this position. Uh, maybe white's still slightly better, but there's no obvious advantage, so maybe this is a good option for black here to go with queen b8, uh, but perhaps best is uh, queen b6, actually. And here we, we, we could have a, a log sequence of uh, rook takes d8, rook takes d8, bishop takes e5, c takes b5, a5, queen c5, queen takes c5, bishop takes c5, bishop takes b7, f6, rook c1, Bishop c4, bishop c3, bishop takes e2, bishop takes f6, rook d1 check, rook d1, takes d1 check, and bishop takes d1 check. And um, here, um, yeah, the, the, this line that I, I went through is one that was suggested, that was given, I think, before computers and engines existed. Um, where it's it said that I mean you know uh, white whites up a pawn but you know black has some drawing chances here. Um, 
Uh, but the engine says that White's amazingly plus 2.4 in this position. Um, but it's a complicated, It's this is a complicated uh, end game. So, I mean, it's very logical that we, that we would get a sequence like this after Queen B6. Um, so that's one, one other option um, uh, where we, we see a lot of what could happen um, if, if Black plays uh, Queen B6. Maybe Queen B8 is best here. Um, for Black, but uh, Irva decides to capture on d1 with the rook. We have rook takes d1, and now queen a5. Uh, knight to d4, attacking the bishop. Bishop c8, and b4, very strong. Uh, and it seems that Irva overlooked this when deciding to bring his queen to a5, uh, despite you know having spent so much time. I mean, it was a few moves back, uh, cal and, and very deep calculation, um, because this is a very strong minority attack, and it's going to result in uh, white gaining control of the very, very important d5 square. Um, and here, black can't just capture with the bishop, because after uh, knight b3, attacking the queen, queen c7, uh, and queen e4, black's just going to lose a piece. Uh, the, the knight's attacked twice, and the bishop is attacked at the same time. Uh, and, for example, if uh, bishop d6, then just queen d4 wins. Um, and if instead bishop c3, then just rook c1, bishop b2, rook c2, same thing. Um, um, white's just winning so you can't just take you can't take the pawn with the bishop so uh, queen c7 is played and again continuing with this strong minority attack uh, b with b5 uh, Aliekin uh, is playing uh, some great chess here uh, c5 knight to f5 and here, uh, black's b-pawn is vulnerable. He has to be a little bit careful here in, in certain variations. Uh, and if it plays, the, you know, this move isn't so great here, uh, f6, uh, because white's going, going to utilize his strong control, again, over d5, uh, over the d5 square. And, uh, that you know, that's the immediate plan going forward. But also this just creates a long-term weakness on the on the light squares that's going to be fatal for black. Here, uh, bishop f6 isn't any better. This doesn't help black uh, anymore because white's positional advantage becomes very obvious after uh, knight d6, uh, rook d8, knight and knight c4. Um, very very clear why uh how strong of a positional advantage white has here um so that's why uh black can't play bishop f6 so just f6 uh knight to e3 bishop e6 and bishop to d5 much stronger than knight d5 here um bishop takes d5 Rook takes d5, very strong. Um, yeah, here playing, what's played is uh, queen a5. Uh, if uh, rook d8, this doesn't really help black here at all because after queen uh, f5, again, this weakness on the white squares from that f6 pawn push, uh, white's pressure is just going to overwhelm black here. Um, the queen is coming to e6 and... Um, uh, uh, black's position is just falling apart, um, but queen a5 doesn't do much any any better. After knight f5, queen e1 check, king g2, bishop d8, uh, bishop takes e5, f takes e5, and very strong. The rook comes up to the seventh rank. Um, bishop f6, knight h6 check, king h8, and uh, after queen takes c5, black resigns. Kind of a quick game, um, and uh, uh, as we'll see as we go forward, 
through these games from this uh, World Chess Championship match. Uh, Irva struggles. Uh, Alec, uh, sorry, Aliakin um, uh, plays outplays him through th uh, um, the earlier parts of this match, um, and uh, Irva makes makes a very strong. Uh, uh, come back and we'll see in the second game Irva plays a very strong game uh, so this gets very uh, continually exciting as it, as it goes forward um, but I thought uh, this was a very interesting uh, uh, Slav game I, I, I want to look at this a little bit deeper um, uh, myself um, in future but um, that uh, hopefully uh, my viewers uh, found this uh, uh, a satisfying uh, uh, first exchange between um, uh, two, two uh, 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 amazing players. Um, so I look forward to continuing to cover this, this series of, of uh, uh, this very strong World Chess Championship. So um, thank you for watching.